Hi everybody, this is Miguel A. Nunez Jr. and you are watching FlyNubianKingTV.com. And what I need you guys to do for me tonight, I need you to hit that thumbs up button. I need you to like the video. I need you to, Eric, not reload. I want to cancel. I need you to share the video. I need you to um, subscribe to FlyNubianKingTV.com. Where's my water? <clears throat> guys, listen to me. Tonight, I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about how devastated I am and about what has happened to um, Nipsey Hussle. And, 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 and I don't even really know the guy. But anyway, let me, let me, let me before I can give it, get into that, guys, make sure you like, hit the thumbs up button, like this video, share this video, subscribe to it. We're FindNewmanKingTV.com. We're always talking about different things. I'm going to have Ernie Hudson on here with me, my uh, co-star from... Um, a um, I'm, 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 I'm family business on BET coming up. I'm going to have him with me, and we're going to be uh, talking, I think either Wednesday or Friday this week. So we're going to have a lot of different Fly Nubian Kings coming on board, talking to you about various things. We're going to just be talking straight up entertainment on Wednesday. Uh, I Like I guys, listen, I'm getting my whole setup redone, so I can't really see your uh, messages, and I've been trying, and I can't pull it up. So I trust that they're there. I trust that you're there. I trust that you are sharing. I trust that you are smiling. I trust that you're having a magnificent, amazing, incredible, wonderful day. I trust that God is blessing you in every single way. And uh, these are the prayers that I have for you, your family, and everybody associated with you. God bless you. So now today I want to talk about what has happened to uh, 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 um, Nipsey Hussle. And again, like I said before, I don't really know him outside of his... Uh, uh, um, his rap, his rap persona, and all of that, and these are the things that I I know him from, and 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 everybody else know him from. So this is all I know him by. I don't. And I so I started to read up, and as I started to read up on 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 uh, on this guy, and 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 I go back to the Bible and what I believe in the Bible, and I go back to that because I look at it like this. It doesn't matter where you come from. People are saying, well, he was a gangster. He was a gangster. He was this and he was that. And you live by the sword. You die by the sword and all of that stuff like that. Okay, but we are not to be judged by our past. It is the actions. I can't really see you guys in um, comments, but uh, we are to be judged by our actions now. Okay, because I look at I look at the things that people are saying that he has done. Right. Well, but. The things that he did in the past, I'm looking at the things that he he's responsible for now. And what I think has happened, I think that, I don't think the person, the person who shot him, I think that they think that they killed him. But to me, I don't think they killed him. I think they actually killed a dream. And let me tell you why I say that. Because... This guy, from what I have been reading, has completely turned his life around. He has become a productive member of his, not just society, but he had become a productive member of his community. And I think that that bullet did not just kill a, 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 a person, which it did, and, and horrible and graphic, and I have no clue, no reason, no, there is no rhyme or reason. But what I think happened there, and some of the one of the biggest things to me, one of my my, my 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 the things that I hate, I think is the biggest tragedy on this entire planet, is graveyards. Graveyards. To me, when I pass a graveyard, it is the saddest thing to me, and it is not so sad. It's not the same sad that you or anybody else would get from a graveyard because I don't look at it as, I look at it as, as death as an incredible, amazing journey for the soul and the spirit. Because like I said, we are spiritual beings and this body may die, but the soul and the spirit will live on and it goes somewhere. And how you live now is going to determine where it is that soul eventually ends up. But let's get back on the point here. Um. Now, this guy, I don't think, when I look at a graveyard and as I pass graveyards all across the country, and I am so sad because to me, a graveyard 
it's not just the people that are buried there. There are old people there that are, who, are, who are in pain and suffering. Who, who it's a blessing that they are they they have moved on from the pain and the blessing and on to something bigger and better and beautiful and with their God that they believed in and dedicated their lives to. And and and, and that's okay. But to me, the biggest uh, uh, and the worst harm for me when I see them are the are the um the people who died too soon. When I go there and you see a person who's 33 years old, who is an artist, think of all the songs, think of all the music we won't get to hear. Think of all the books that won't be, won't be written. Think of all the art that won't be done. When the young kids die before their time for us because of some idiotic, tragic, unfathomable, unconsciousable, uh, a reason for by somebody, they we all lose out as a society. Some of them could have gone on to be the the, the, the cure of AIDS, uh, a, a composer, a, a great artist. So to me, when I see a graveyard, I see so much lost potential. Just like this guy. I mean, poor guy, man. He had changed his life around. He was doing so much for his community, and to me, that is such that is that compounds the horrible tragedy that compounds the horrible tragedy when you think about think about all the good that he was doing in his community helping the young kids he had been in that game of the the, the, the um the game life and he was trying to help transform his neighborhood help to transform kids in his neighborhood he was trying to make a difference because it doesn't matter where you've been it only matters where you're going it doesn't matter what you have done in your past as long as you have made your legal uh, ramifications and paid your debt to society and not only that you have committed yourself your soul and your purpose and your life to bettering yourself in your community. If you can do that, you can step from being, you can come away from being a, a, a convicted convict uh, or being con seen as a convicted convict and a convicted convict only. You can be seen as someone who's transformed their life, which is what I have been reading, what this man has been doing and what he had, he's decided to, he didn't have to live in that neighborhood. He didn't have to open up his business in that neighborhood. He could have went to Hollywood and he could have did all of that old Hollywood stuff. He was really committed, dedicated to his new family. This guy was, he, um, he was trying to um, help kids in the neighborhood. He was coming up with programs and, and doing documentaries. And, and a lot of people have this, um, uh, 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 speculation that because he was uh, doing documentary about the um, the guy who was killed, I can't think of his name now, was just brought to attention on this guy, which I got to read more on it. But uh, I, I, I guess there's some uh, uh, herbalist. I don't know the guy's name, but I'm sure most of you guys know his name. And I'm sure you guys are typing in his name right now. You probably heard about this. So if you got it, you can just type it in and everybody can see it. But it was an herbalist who had I guess come up with different herbs to cure lots and lots of diseases, including AIDS, and he was murdered. And, and there's a whole conspiracy thing. That's a whole nother thing, which they say he was about to release a DVD on that. And a lot of people are already starting, already starting with the same, the same uh, Jesse Swellick. All of that. Yeah, he was a new center, this center, that, and he yelled with the hat. And they already started with this. With the conspiracy theories, and, 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 and then you can add a conspiracy theory, and you can twist the conspiracy theorist uh, 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 in any way, shape, fashion, and form to conform anybody's mind when you are already have people's out, people out there whose mind is so preconditioned to this crazy madness of the spreading manipulation of propaganda that we call social media. And, and, and because people are so preconditioned to it already, you can lead their minds into any way in any direction that they want. And that's exactly what even governments, even governments are figuring that out, guys. Even governments, analytics, that's all that, that is. Social media companies such as Facebook, they're all figuring that stuff out at themselves. And the last person to realize it are us, are you. And that because you're so preconditioned to it, they can stop throwing anything out there. 
Well, you know, cause why would he, why would it be the gang members? Why? Why they would just ride all the way up, right up into his neighborhood and shoot him. It had to be the government. It was the government. I, you know how many times so far that I have already heard it's the government, the government, the government, the government, the government, the government, the government. The government. I've heard it so many times already. But my point to you is, guys, please, please, please just pray for this guy's family. And let's keep it in into real perspective here. What was lost was more so than just a 33-year-old husband, father, black man, friend, family, community member. What we lost was the momentum of change and the momentum of hope that he was starting to bring forth into the community for which he lived, raised, and was born, and to try to bring some peace, some love, some togetherness, some harmony, some way and opportunity for others stuck in the vicious cycle that caused him to go left. That's to, to stop that, to turn all of these lives around and these people's lives around and the conditions lives around and the conditions around so there would be more hope in the community. So there would be more hope and less of the gang life. It will be less of these kids because we have not, we cannot be stupid and you don't have to live over in any particular area because I'm telling you, I have been to Compton. I have been to Long Beach. I have been to Watts and every single body over there is just the same as every neighborhood I ever been in in the entire state and United States. They're just hardworking, loving, caring people who care about their neighborhood and but these, there's some gang members who don't feel like they have any hope. They don't feel like they have any other way out. And so they get with the people that give these gangs, they give them a, 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 a family unity and it keeps them, it gives them that which they are not receiving. What this guy was trying to do is to break the bond of the, 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 the need to attract that bond through gang membership and gang interaction to just particular uh, 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 initiatives and, and, and programs within his, his community. So to me, what we lost that day was not just this poor, uh, he, he just seemed so humble to me. He seemed like he was humble. He seemed like he was on the right path. And it seemed like he really wanted to do the right thing for his community. And so I say we didn't just lose him. We compounded it because what it did was it stopped the momentum of change it stopped the uplifting of souls and now whatever it is it perpetuates more of what he was standing to fight against and that's how i see it and i sure hope that everybody just stop talking about what it could have been what it should have been and let's pray for this family let's be in support of them because right now like i said that neighborhood and community man they are the biggest losers he is but one man he is but one man and it is horrible, but let his mission, let his, his wish, let his hope, don't let it die in vain because of some coward who wanted to come up and we don't even know what it was about. And I am dying to know why, 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 who, what reason, I mean, you know this guy was a good guy. Now, there could be things that we don't know. But your words, your deeds, and your actions seems to me to signify more about your, your content of your character than, than anything else. Because you can have people out there saying what they do, saying what they are, saying what they'll do, saying how they feel, saying how they want to help, saying what's going on in the neighborhood, saying how ain't nobody else doing nothing, but then they don't do. And that's what I saw him. He actually was doing something. So that's my point. And I don't care what anybody say. I truly, truly think that we lost the momentum of hope when we lost him. I don't think we just lost an incredible, amazing, amazing artist who had hope and who wanted to bring happiness and all of that shit to a community that needed it desperately. 
So let's hope they find out who it is. Anybody know anything about it? I don't care who you are, what affiliation you may be with. This is not about any kind of affiliation. And I don't, I mean, like I said, I don't, I'm not putting anybody's uh, 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 set situation or whatever, because like I said, you can't judge anybody if you don't know the situation that they're living in. And then you say, well, yo, why the game? Why he in the game? Well, he, he ain't got to be in the game. Yeah, he ain't got to be in the game. Let me explain something to you. Don't talk about what you don't know about. That's the bottom line, because in some of those neighborhoods, you got to be with some set. <laughs> you don't know the situation, so don't talk about it. the only situation you do know about and the only situations we do know about and the only situations that we can know about are the situations where we practicing what we preaching and not just talking out of our ass and then turn around and letting people see us doing the same thing. You got to remember your children's are going to grow up mimicking what they see you do. You got to remember that. Now, you got to think about it. Your children, and this is so sad to me because they tell me his, his little son was there just taking a picture right before it happened. But you got to remember this. Your kids watch you. That's why some of your kids, sometimes they'll be doing the same things you do. Yeah, you'll start doing that shit whole lot. You'll be doing something like this. And the next thing you know, you'll notice your little kid. Because they mimic like, like, like little sponges, your mannerisms, your, your, your tones. Look at the little kid on TV. No, 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 mommy. No, 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 no. You listen to me. You remember that little cute kid that was on there? That was just, that kid was mimicking his father. And you can tell that was what he's seen. And little kids are like sponge. And you got to remember this. Why you sit at home talking about the blood? You're a robot, bitch. Why you? You all that bitching, all that and talking all of this shit, and you the bluffing and popping, and you got kids around. Just think about it. They're looking at you. They're mimicking that. They're 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 soaking all of that stuff in. Now, if you got the same kids sitting over there, and you're talking about, okay, yes, okay, but how much money is it? If I put fifteen hundred dollars into it, right? Am I gonna get back twenty five hundred? So, what is my investment? What is it for me to invest? Hold on one second. Hold on. Hey, Tommy. Yeah. Hey, honey, listen, I need you to get the books. Uh, he wants to go over the, uh, the, the, how much it's going to cost. The da, 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 da. And now your kid grow up hearing about you. Investment, investment, investment. Instead of blunt and blunt and hoes and bitches and blunts and blunts and hoes and bitches. But they'll be hearing about investments. Hey, Lonnie, can you get me that? Uh, uh, they want to know what it's going to cost to blah, 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 to blah, blah, blah. It forms their basis of thinking and where they're going to start to go later in life. That's why you see people who have, who are like a, I'll give you an example, I have an uncle. He has five brothers. And his father was like that. His father owned like 995,872 businesses all around the neighborhood. That's what his father was about. Business. He owned a drug store, he owned this, he owned that, he owned this, he owned that, he owned this. And all five of his sons all have two or three different businesses going. All of them. They all have two or three different businesses going because they picked it up from their father. And that's what it's all about. You learn and you absorb from what you see around you. So we got to be careful all the things that we say and do. And we have to do what this young man was doing. He had got away from his old life. He found another avenue he didn't just sit. He didn't just say, you know what? This is my life. This is what I do. You know what I'm saying? This is what I do. This is how we do it over here. You know what I mean? Y'all can do that. You know what I'm saying? Y'all got them opportunities. I ain't got these opportunities over here. You know what I'm saying? Over here, we ain't got the opportunity to become no big old singer. We ain't got the opportunity to be no rapper. You know what I mean? He could have did any of that and all of that and all of those different excuses. You hear everybody doing this man could have done them too. But he didn't. He chose to rise above it, man, and that's what he was trying to instill in so many people in that neighborhood. And this is, like I said, I honestly cannot tell you. I know so much about this guy. I know he had a lot of mixtapes, and I've heard his stuff before. I know he was working with a lot of new artists, and and but I, I listened to some of his, the way he was his old talking and stuff now, and that's what I've been doing and listening. And I've been just going through some of his old videos and. 
listening to the things that he said to try to get a better understanding of where he was here more so than here. And that's what I have been doing. So I have done, done that. And I just seemed like this guy was a really, really good guy. A really, really, really good guy. And, and, and then I go back to what I said in the beginning. It doesn't matter if you were a bad guy. It doesn't matter if you did all kinds of bad things. And if you paid your debt to society. And not only must one pay their debt to society... Because paying your debt to society doesn't do anything because you can end up back there again, repaying another debt to society. Unless you understand, once you pay your debt to society, now you have to pay your debt to yourself. Now you got to pay your debt to yourself to get your life back in, in, on track. Your mothers, your fathers, your grandparents, they didn't struggle and hard to raise and feed and help you just so you can go out there and turn and throw and destroy your life. Your life, their mother and father, their lives depend on what happens with you as well because your success will spread back to your mother, your father. Think about it. Everybody, black folks, they make it to go out and start buying their mom and dad a house. That's what they do. They go buy their mom and dad a house, car, something like that. You know, And that's what we have to do. So that's all I got to say about it. We really do have to look out for the next generation. And that is what he was doing. He didn't pay any attention to what he had been doing in the past. He didn't uh, linger on. All he said was, you know, some of his, his, his lyrics were real and they were about the neighborhood. But his actions showed me that he had risen above his message, his actions showed me that he had serious, serious, serious heart. And it showed me that this was a guy who was committed to doing things. And everybody keeps saying, um, why he stay over in the neighborhood? Hold on. Why he stay over in the neighborhood? Okay. But before I go into why he stayed over in the neighborhood, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. Make sure you like the video. Make sure you share the video. Make sure you subscribe to FlyingNubianKingTV.com. And a lot of people were asking me and saying this to me. Uh, you know, I understand, but, you know, he, he brought it on himself. What do you mean he brought it on himself? How do you bring it on yourself to have somebody walk up to you and, and pull a gun out and just shoot you? How do you bring that on yourself? I know what you're saying. Because by how life he lived. I, I know how life he used to live. But the, if I was to go by the life he's living now... Then you can't say it. And well, you can't say it. Well, Goose has always come home to roast. And maybe he's paying for something that he did in the past. Okay, get listen to me. I don't believe that. Because I don't believe I don't believe gang members when somebody is it, it's I can't even answer it. I didn't want to even go into it because I don't want to answer it for that. All I can answer is from from the heart. And that man had a heart, and that's all I know about. I don't know what he used to have. And like I said, maybe he had to do what he had to do to survive at that particular time. But like I said, it's not about what you did. It is about what you are doing. You can change your life around. You can change your situation around just by changing what you're doing. What you're thinking. Where you're going. The people you're hanging out with. This guy had changed. He started hanging out with different people. He started making differences. He was getting ready to have a, 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 a what would you call it? A, a, um, they were getting ready to have a, 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 a round table or something with the police department there. This guy was really committed to making a change in his neighborhood. And we, and it's like when they killed Jesus, they, um, they killed Martin Luther King, they crucified hope. They crucified hope. And I just think that no matter what happens, we must always remember the most important thing is not what somebody did and not what somebody used to be. Oh, he used to be a grump. Oh, he used to be this. Oh, he used to be that. And he used to be that. It's not about that. It's not about that at all. It's not about what a person used to be. It's what a person is. If you went around judging and we went around and judging everybody from what they used to be and what they, what they used to do and not what they're doing now, then what is the benefit of of, of rehabilitation. What is the what is the profit to re rehabilitation? The biggest thing we must learn to forgive, and the problem with doing it, and this is is to is to forgive, is to forgive. 
is to forgive. But the problem is, it's hard to forgive because so many people won't forget. And you can't, you can't connect forgetting and forgiving. You cannot connect the two. You can't say, I can never forgive him because I can never forget him. Because there are things you will never forget. They go here and they become memories. They become, they, you will never forget them. But if you say that you cannot, if you're connecting forgetting and forgiving, and you know that you can never forget a memory, that means you're going to be harbor, harboring something inside your head forever because you're going to have that memory forever. So you cannot attract that memory to something negative because to a memory to something negative because negative negativity will stay with you always and that memory is going to stay with you always. So you don't want to do that. And that's why I say we must learn to forgive people for their past. Now, the only way you can really truly be expected to be forgiven from your, from your past and that is if you truly, truly can show from to to the people from which you are expecting that they must truly see your change. Anybody you expecting their forgiveness for your past before they can forgive you they must truly see your past. That's what I think. They must really be able to see from your past that you are a changed person. And that's what I think is missing. Because a lot of people, they don't change. I mean, they, 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 they want people to forgive them, but they're not showing people that they're worthy of their forgiveness because they're still living the same life. They're still doing the same thing. But while the time they why they're still living and doing the same thing, they all out there talking about this and talking about that. Yeah, man, you can't do this. And then they go out and they can do it and they go do it. This didn't seem like the person that I've been reading about, but like, again, I don't really know the guy. But I have been reading a lot about it, and I'm going to continue to read out. And and my and once I find out a little bit more about what happened, what's going on, I may come back to you with something else. I have no clue where this is going, and neither, and I don't think anybody does because I don't think it's it makes no sense, and no one even understands it. How? Why? I'm I'm dumbfounded. I am totally dumbfounded, just as all the other artists, and I've watched online at the most ridiculous horrible racist trolls don't even respond to them don't respond to the idiot racist trolls don't even respond to them because what they're saying is just horrific they don't know the man they're just going by skin color and that we should not get into back and forth with and and that's what they want they just want they want to be able to say something and then somebody re respond to it so they can go back to come with something else repulsive but they make all this stuff. Nobody respond. Make all this stuff. Shit, nobody respond again. Then they stop and they go to some other place. See, that's what happens. So that's what you have to do. And that's what's going on. And um, I'm, again, I'm trying to pull up all these different things about it right now. But uh, it's just hard. Let me see if I can pull up some new news. Ah, no, forget about it. it. Takes too long to pull it up. But. The bottom line is, I want everybody to make sure you hit that thumbs up button. I want you to like the video, share the video, uh, subscribe to FlyNubianKingTV.com, and make sure you tell all your friends about it and tell them to subscribe to it. And, and we're going to be here every day talking about shit. And uh, the bottom line is, guys, we have to pack, practice love. We have to practice more compassion. And we have to practice forgiveness. That's the key. Keep, keep, forgiveness is the key. That's the one. What is it? Uh, break in the... Uh, oh, we have to practice forgiveness. Because if you don't forgive people and look at what they're doing now, you're going to be always judging them from their past. And none of us, none of us want to be continually judged by our past. I can look at every single one, especially you and you and you too. And I, yes, you sitting there eating. All of you. Have things in your past that you, you don't want to be judged by. And think about it. When you've done things in your past and you've worked so hard to, 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 to work against that, you've worked so hard to, 
to do things that, that, that show that you've changed, to make up for the things that you've done in your own way, and in your own, to your community, to your friends and to others. When you've done that, you don't wanna be walking around constantly being judged by your past. But in the same respect, you have to also understand when you are in that position that there will be people that will always judge you from your past. They're always gonna judge you from your past. So you just have to be stronger, bigger, and you have to be bigger than them. And you have to understand that everybody who are judging you from the past don't really know you. They don't know you. They think they know you, but they don't know you. So when they start talking about you and saying this and saying that, they're not really talking about you. They're talking about the you that they think that you are. It doesn't mean that it's who you are. Okay? Just remember that because I'm looking at the internet and they were saying 78% of the female students uh, feel inadequate. Why is that? That's because they feel inadequate to in comparison to others. You should never compare yourself to others. Look to what you can do, what you're the best you're, you're best at. Look for what you, you do the best. But the bottom line is this. I want to talk about Nipsey Hussle because that's the meaning of this message. And again, I'm going to kind of close out here because I can't keep going back and forth on it. <clears throat> the message is... Um, that what I think happened that day was a tragedy beyond belief. I think more so taken away, not just an amazing artist, not just a husband, a, man, a, a fiance, a father, a son, a friend, a companion, um, and all the things that he, he was, ex gang member, whatever. All the things that he were, he was. I think the, that compounds it because of the person that he became. The positive, positive message that he was able to convey in just his being, in just his success to so many other gang members that you know. I don't care what it is that you can. No matter what happens. Look what you look what Snoop did. Look what Dre did. Look what Ice Cube did. It's just so many examples, and he was just another one that could give hope. And he wasn't just reliant on that particular aspect of his being to just project hope. He was projecting hope in his actions, in his money, and in everything he did. So what my thing is, and the final in my entire message, I think what was killed and what died on Crenshaw Boulevard was a horrible tragedy and it destroyed not just a father, a son, a fiance, but it destroyed hope. I would dare to say that I think because he's not around and all the hope and all of the things that he were doing, his death will cost other lives down the road from people not benefiting from what he was trying to do. That's what I think will happen. And God bless him. Let's all pray for his family. Let's all pray for him, his fiance, his kids, his son that was there. Let's pray for them all. I don't know who or what this was about. We're going to let the police do their investigation. Let's stay off the uh, uh, speculations because all we do is fuel the wrong thoughts about this man. If we are to be out there talking about anything, the only thing we should be saying is the good that he was doing. Because the good that he was doing is who he was. Not what he, they, most of the trolls and the people, the, 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 they want you to concentrate on what he used to be and what he used to do. And yeah, okay, he did, 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 did. that's what they want. But let's concentrate on who he was, who he became, and what he was doing because they were all good and positive. I pray for all the families. I pray for the entire neighborhood, the area who didn't deserve this in the neighborhood, all the businesses that are in that area who now may have people that don't even want to come there. I mean, we, we there's a lot of people in that area that are going to suffer because of this horrible, horrible, tragic accident. 
And I don't know why, even if it, even those squares, every one of those squares should have some security. I don't want to open up any other can of worms about security and anybody trying to sue nobody, but they should have security in that square. And I don't know if they do, and they did. And that security probably getting a fish sandwich somewhere. They probably don't even have a gun. But, um, and I don't even want to start saying that guns are the answer to everything. But anyway, I just feel it's a tragic, and we should all pray for the families. Pray for him, pray for his kids, kids, parents, family, everybody. Uh, anyway, guys, I'm going to have to talk to you guys later. God bless you. This is Monday. I will be back Wednesday. And again, on Wednesday, I'm going to be here with uh, Ernie, Ernie Hudson. Um, Ernie Hudson, you guys know Ernie. He uh, is, is my co-star on Family Business, new hit show on BET. We're going to be here on Wednesday talking just about entertainment. So if y'all got questions, you know, anybody want to ask stuff, anybody want to say stuff, you got questions about, you know, just, hey, Ernie, when you were in Ghostbusters, did the Ghostbusters, you know, all, anything, you know what I'm saying? Miguel, when you did the Wanda Man, hell no, I ain't going to give you no kiss. Hell! How did you come up with that? All of that shit is going to be on Wednesday night, guys. We're going to be talking about everything. It's going to be an entertainment tonight. Only if he can't do it Wednesday. If he can't do it on Monday, I'm sorry, Wednesday, then it will be on Friday. But it's going to be a big entertainment. I want you guys to let everybody know, hey, man, Miguel and Ernie Hudson are going to be on. And I'm going to be on uh, Dr. Bryce's show tomorrow. Uh, I don't know. I think it's 2 o'clock. Dr. Bryce. I'm sorry, Dr. Boyce. Uh, Dr. Boyce. Uh, we're gonna be. I'm on his show tomorrow. We're gonna be talking about money and telling you guys a lot of amazing, incredible money tips to help you that I've learned that will blow your mind. You're gonna like, damn, I didn't know that. And then I'm gonna tell you something else. You're gonna be like, damn, I didn't know that either. And then I'm gonna say something else. You're gonna be like, damn, why well, I don't know that. And then he's gonna tell you something. You're like, damn, I ain't know that either. So it's gonna be a whole lot of damn, I didn't know that. So make sure you tell everybody if you want to go to Miguel Nunez and Dr. Boyce Watkins, and it's gonna be called. Damn, I didn't know that. Uh, Money Conference. Tomorrow night, we're going to be on his show. Tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Make sure you look for it. And I'll see you guys again and again. This is horrible what happened to Nipsey. We all pray for his family. Let's stay out of the trolling. Let's not respond to the horrible, rude, racist thing. Because they go to these sites and they look for these kind of things just to rile you up. Their only sole intention is to rile you up. Do not go for it. Do not fall for it. Don't even do it. And concentrate on what he was doing. Not what he used to do. Everybody tell me, well, yeah, he used to be a game. Well, he used to be a game. That doesn't mean anything. That doesn't mean because he used to be a game member. That doesn't mean he deserves to be shot down in front of his store because he used to be a game member and went and changed his life around and became a productive member of his community and to society and started to do good. You saying he deserved this because that he used to be a game member. See what I'm saying? It makes no sense. And you look like a fool when you say it and you look like an idiot when you even say stupid shit like that. So don't even let it be among you. God bless you guys again, and I will talk to you later.